Okay, so we move on to, uh, per se, the, uh, the third of four different types of problems that we're doing. The first one was the simplest. And again, we're doing um, composition, stoichiometry, or excuse me, reaction, as opposed to composition, uh, stoichiometry, because the first type was a, with a chemical reaction changing moles to moles. The second type was that of a amount of moles into a mass. And this is just the opposite of that, where we convert a mass into moles. And then uh, eventually we get to uh, doing mass-to-mass uh, -mass problems. And we begin with uh, talking about this on page 308. Here's some examples um, on there. Of course, uh, uh, the sample problem deals with uh, it's talking about uh, manufacturing industrial nitric acid. And, um, uh, excuse me, the first step, oh, in the industrial manufacture of nitric acid um, requires the oxidation of ammonia. And it goes through uh, where you're taking a certain mass of the 824 grams of ammonia and saying, well, how many uh, moles of nitrous oxide would be, uh, would be needed, okay? So, again, we go from two-step problems, which was mole to mole. Then we did that of uh, mole to mass, which is three steps. This will also be three steps when we go mass to, to mole. And again, uh, what's significant about moles? Yep, it's just a counting unit. Okay, so on page 309 in the practice section, it says oxygen was discovered by Joseph Priestley in 1774 when he heated mercury to oxide to decompose it to form its constituent elements. Okay, so how many moles of mercury to oxide or HGO are needed to produce 125 grams of oxygen? Okay, so how would we go about starting that problem? I mean, granted, I could just, we could just write this up here and just say this, you do this, 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 and then we'll be on our merry way. Okay, well, we need to come up with an equation first. So it says mercury to oxide, which is HGO. Okay, so what process is that going through? So what's happening then? Are we adding something to this? Okay, so it's breaking down to, as you said, HG plus O. And look at that, it's already balanced. How many of you would say it's balanced right now? Why is that? It's a gas, so oxygen's diatomic, okay? So there again, now, if, if you're not being honest with yourself, thinking, yeah, I would have caught that, and you didn't, okay? Remember, there are plenty of pitfalls here that you could fall into. And uh, if uh, you say, yeah, I'll get it, I got it, I got it, eventually that could catch up to you, okay? So, again, this is just a, a repeating pattern that we go over and over. So we have our equation. The next thing we do is what? Okay. So then the, the next thing you could do, okay. So how many moles of mercury to oxide? So what would we put above this? We're looking for that. So... X amount of moles of this, because we don't know, because that's what the question is asking for, okay? And then what's the 125 for? So we have 125 grams of this, okay? And uh, I don't know why uh, this has popped in my head, probably because of uh, how you can decompose oxygen and looking at the date of 1774. It wasn't much after that to where I'm, I'm reading a, a book by uh, Brian Kilmeade about uh, the spy ring of, uh, that George Washington had. How many of you have seen the, the first National Treasure movie? 
Now, it in the yeah, I understand it's a movie, but what's true in the movie about the back side, the Declaration of Independence? There's a secret code written on there. Do you suppose is that fact or fiction? I I mean, th there's chances are there's no code on the back of the actual uh, Declaration of Independence, but. Could it be possible on any historic document that at one time there was a secret code embedded into there? Or is that just is that just in the movies? Yeah, it's possible. That, that's actually the idea of using invisible ink and different types of substances that were used to uh, to actually make that appear in the in the paper. And the it, and it's kind of like. Uh, Picture it this way: Just because you uh, have have found out that there's a secret code, unless you know what the makeup of that invisible ink was, you're not going to probably be able to make that visible. Okay, and and one way of looking at that is it, it's kind of like if you get envenom unfortunately get envenomated by uh, a species of uh, dangerous or uh, venomous animals. The only way to treat that is anti-venom, okay? So unless you have the correct venom, you can't make anti-venom. So the way I perceive that, unless you know what type of ink was used, there's no way of uh, making that, the invisible, visible, unless you know the, the correct formula for the ink, which is actually, uh, I would say, pretty fascinating for uh, the, the late 18th century. Pretty, uh, pretty. Uh, what do I want to say? Interesting uh, reading. Okay, so again, a three-step problem. We see a number written in grams. What are we going to do? Change that to what? Okay, so we're going to change that to moles. 125. Oh yeah. See, I get to cheat again because we're looking for an answer of seven. 0.81. So we'll write that over here. 7.81. Okay. 125 grams. Here again, what did we say when we're writing these gases? Technically, yes, that's oxygen. But what should you do? Okay. Because if if we just left it like this. Chances are, what might you do in this second step when you're converting it to moles? What might you put down here? Incorrectly. You might put 16 instead of what? So that good practice that we were talking about, or good habits, if you keep carrying that 2, no matter how heavy it is, ah. I, I guess I... I, yeah. I, I guess I don't rank to what they were laughing about earlier. I, I, I'm not in that league, am I, Cole? No, okay. Probably. Did you say Yeti? Okay. Yeah, I guess you had to be there. Okay, so now that we have our two there, for every mole of O2, how many grams do we have? 32. Okay, so these are gone. We're in moles of oxygen. Okay, now, how many steps are left? Is there at least one, or is there two left? Yes, there's one more, okay? Because this next step, why is this next step so important? Yes, it's a, not only is it a mole to mole ratio, it allows us to change what we have, which is moles of oxygen, into what it is we're looking for, which is moles of, okay? Now, since this is a mole to mole ratio, what does that mean we have to do? We need to look back at our balanced chemical reaction and is there a number in front of the oxygen? No. 
There's one. Yes. Okay. What's the mass of one oxygen atom? Okay. That's why we said it's always a good idea to keep carrying that little few there. Then you don't forget. Okay. Then we go back to here. We have a two there. So we put a two here. So 150 divided by, no, excuse me, 250 divided by 32 is what? Oh, what a coinky dink. We got it wrote right there, 7.81. Okay. Gonna try to scrape some of that off the top. Well, that's a good idea, but probably not so. You probably don't have to do it if it's in the shade. Um, although, but it, you know, it continually does melt. I will say that. I think it happened in our driveway overnight because our house faces the north. So, anyway, what about all day? Yeah. Okay, so. The second question, how many moles of mercury are produced? So in this case, it, when it comes to reaction stoichiometry, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to go from one side of the reaction to the other. Okay? We can begin with 125 grams of oxygen and see how many moles of mercury are produced. And with that, is there a whole lot that has changed in this? We still have 125. We still have this step. What's true about this one? Yeah. So the same. Th it, we get the same answer. Oh, yeah. We just got to take this off of there. Same answer. 7.81. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, it would appear that we have a, a pretty good grasp of, of what's going on here. And I'm not sure there, in that first problem sheet there might be mass to mass problems. And I'm pretty sure there's at least one. We should go out and move our vehicles for them. But we don't want to go outside. Are you parked over there? Then... You're parked on the north side here. You are not. Okay. I never realized you parked in that lot. I think we'll go ahead and continue. Um, on page 311, okay, we'll go ahead and, okay, uh, again, there's a sample problem that you could read through. I want you to pick number one, number two, or number three. Okay, two is what I heard first. It says when copper metal is added to silver nitrate in solution, silver metal and copper two nitrate are produced. What is, uh, yeah, what mass of silver is produced from 100 grams of copper? So again, you're not always given the reaction, okay? You may have to write that out yourself. So when we put this terminology to use, how many of you would have problems right now to your reaction. One, just one, that's pretty good. Okay, go ahead and write it out. Or were we just not paying attention? Okay, 
You got the reaction already? No, I'm not working on it. Oh, yeah. All right. Yep, got it. And maybe it's not a problem, but uh, usually in the first initial stages, uh, it's, it's my, uh, not my understanding, it's what I've observed is sometimes uh, we may struggle with this. Not that we will, but there, there's a chance that uh, we, we, we could. We don't have cobalt. Oh, sorry, okay. Okay. So what it's saying is when copper is added to silver nitrate. So that means when copper, Cu, is added to silver nitrate, which would be what? What's silver? And what's nitrate then? Okay, you said go by your negative ions. What's nitrate? Negative one. What's silver? Positive one. So this is balanced. So then it's telling you after this reaction, okay, says silver metal and copper 2 nitrate are produced. So what that means, what type of reaction must this be, even if we didn't go any further? Uh, you are correct. How did you, or why did you know that? What do you have right here? A lone or single metal that's going to flip-flop. So it says you get silver metal, okay? plus copper to nitrate means what on this right hand side? Copper has a, a positive two charge, okay? So what do we gotta do to this nitrate then? Put that in parentheses, put a two, okay? We've got two nitrates on the right, how many on the left? So what do we got to do to that then? Put a two here, therefore I happen to put a two there. Okay, so now it says what mass of silver is produced? Okay, so what mass? We don't know. X amount of grams. So that's, we're looking for that and what's being produced. Okay from starting with what amount on the left side? 100 grams of copper, okay? Okay, now this is a four-step problem, okay? So we've got our 100 grams, we see this, we see grams, we're gonna change it to what? We're going to change it to moles, okay? All right, so how do we cancel out copper in this second step? Okay, so for, was it 60 something? Sixty-three point five five grams of copper gives us a mole of copper. Okay. Now, probably the most crucial step, the next one. So once you get to this step, we see we've got a mole ratio. So we have to put a two here, okay? So our moles of copper are now gone, just like our grams are. 
So now in our final step, how do we get rid of that mole of silver? So for every mole of silver, you get 107. Now, sometimes it's just human nature. People may look at this step here and say, oh, I got to go back to my reaction here and put a two down here. Why do we not put a two here where we did on this step? Because this is not a mole to mole ratio. This one is. Okay? I can't stress that enough. And it's going to happen, okay? Just like when uh, we, we talk to seniors, when, when you, even for you people, when you go off to college, you're going to get run down. You're going to get sick. It's, it's just one of them aspects of growing up and, and being an adult and taking care of yourself and just realizing that, you know, I need to take care of myself. I'm probably going to stay home or stay in the dorm or whatever it is to... Uh, get the rest that, that, that you need, okay? Because um, it is so easy to get run down. Even in high school, some of you probably feel you get run down, and it's very easy to do. All right. The author says we should get 239. 239. 339, sorry. Okay. Do we feel good with that? Yep. Left side? Yeah. Middle? Right side? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and look at the section review then. All right. Number four on the section review on page 311. <clears throat> says, when sodium chloride reacts with silver nitrate, okay, silver chloride precipitates. What mass of silver chloride is produced from 75 grams of silver nitrate? So, yes, three... 339 was, was the answer for that. Okay. So, section review, page 311. It says sodium chloride, which is what? Okay. Does it say silver nitrate? Okay. Is there anything we need to change on this left side? Nope. So if there are no little subscripts, what's going to happen when you get to the right side here? It's a double replacement. And more importantly, what's true about that reaction? It's already balanced because nothing changed. We had plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one. So all your coefficients are all ones. Okay? So I'll let you work through that problem, and you should get 63.3. See if that's what you get. 63.30 grams HgCl. Is anyone having problems getting it set up where you're starting and where you're going? Okay.
Is that someone from the city plowing the parking lot? Did we get an answer of 63? Oh, oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. So we've got one ping. You ping. We got two pings. What does that mean to ping? You know? Yep. Sixty three point three zero grams. Okay. Is anyone oh the left side is good, right side. Are we okay? of this substance and we need to see how many grams X amount we don't know of silver chloride okay so we have 75 grams of silver nitrate okay and remember you can abbreviate these like I did SN for silver nitrate as long as you know that that's what the formula for that is so when we add 48 107 and 14 what do we get Sixty-nine point eight eight grams of silver nitrate gives us a mole of silver nitrate. Okay, so these are gone. So for every mole of silver nitrate, we get a mole of silver chloride. Now, in this mole ratio, nothing changed because all of our coefficients are ones. Okay. So then in this final step, we change this mole of silver chloride, okay, mole of silver chloride, and our grams of silver chloride is what? 143.32. Okay, so the only thing we're left with is grams of silver chloride, and that's what we're looking for, and you multiply these out and divide by 169, so notice 75 times 143, divide by 169, and that gives you your 63.30 grams of silver chloride. Okay. Yeah, that's just rounding up to the three. All right, so left side, middle, right side. Okay, so it's not that we're, yeah, we're a little bit ahead, so what that means is tomorrow when we assign that, I can just hand it to you and the, the rest of the time will, will probably be yours. And just remember, just take advantage of that time on Wednesday, okay, because it's so, we're just talking about getting run down if you're given time in class, 
It's not that you need to be working from bell to bell, but just take advantage of that time. That way, if you're stumbling with something, you can ask that question while you're here. So that's all I've got for today. We will uh, continue with maybe one more example tomorrow. We'll get you on your way with your first uh, assignment. Okay.